Good evening. I'm Jeff Spence from the Alumni Relations Office at Thomas Jefferson University, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's program. This evening, we are pleased to welcome alumni from our occupational therapy programs from Jefferson and our legacy Philadelphia University campuses, along with former and current faculty and staff. We look forward to this being the first of many new opportunities to come together as a community. With that, it's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Kathy Pearsall, Chair of the Department of Occupational Therapy. Not only is Dr. Pearsall a professor and chair of the program, she served in the OT department at Philly U for 10 years prior to coming to Jefferson in 2008. Dr. Pearsall, take it away. Thank you so much. I'm just gonna share my screen. Welcome everyone. I'm so excited to be here and have our guests here too, who I'll introduce in a second. Uh, so I am so thrilled to be talking about um, where we've come, when, where we're going, and to open it up for some discussion at the end of our time together tonight. So <clears throat> in thinking about what I wanted to talk about tonight and uh, you know, the goals or objectives that I had, it, it kind of boils down to what I have here that I want to, uh, we want to, our department wants to promote occupational therapy alumni engagement. And of course, as Jeff just mentioned, that includes those from Jefferson and also from Philadelphia University and to begin to engage as an alumni group or network. So uh, we want to gather, which we're doing. We want to dialogue. Um, I'll be talking, but I hope at the end we'll be talking together. I specifically want to listen and I want to learn uh, from all of you as to how we can foster a community of uh, alumni. So this evening, um, we're going to focus on leadership by honoring uh, some leaders that are with us right now. We are, I would want to share some information about uh, the transformations at, that we have gone through over the last three years between Philadelphia University and Jefferson and uh, becoming one department. And that leads into talking to, to sharing with some information about what exactly is going on in our department and all the activities, looking into the future, and then we'll have time at the end for some discussion. So <clears throat> we are extremely fortunate to have Ellen Kalogner, Janice Burke, and Roseanne Schaff with us this evening. All of those names, everyone that is listening right now, I know, know those names and know those people. Um, I asked them to uh, just uh, join us and to just share a little perspective, reflections on their experiences and uh, their uh, perceptions from their experiences within the Department of Occupational Therapy. I wanted to start uh, with Ellen Kalodner. Uh, as you see here, <clears throat> Ellen uh, was the founding director of the program at Philadelphia University and also with Ruth Shem, who unfortunately couldn't be with us tonight, was, is the founding uh, academic field work coordinator for the Jefferson program. So I am going to pass this now on to Ellen. So I think you can show your, Jeff might need to help us, show your uh, video. There uh, you go. Looks it. like I'm here, according we to, see you. I can see myself anyway. Yep, we <laughs> there see. We go. So, hello everyone. Uh, uh, as Kathy said, uh, I'm Ellen Claudner. It's a pleasure to um, participate in this inaugural alumni program. Um, it's been my really distinct pleasure to have worked with um, Ruth and Janice and Roseanne, uh, and actually Wendy as well. Since I, after I left serving as the program director at Philly U, I moved over to the Division of Continuing and Professional Studies. So I was still at Philadelphia University and certainly Wendy's and my paths crossed. So um, it's absolutely incredible to me when I think about how many dramatic changes the profession has gone through since I joined the Jefferson faculty in 1982. Um, and since Ruth and I 
envisioned um, what the program would look like, how it's grown is extraordinary. And um, our early visions of what it would be like to open a new program in Philadelphia and um, then evolve into a program that, a pro well, we started with a program that um, embraced the model of human occupation. So we actually um, spent a fair amount of time educating the OT community in the greater Delaware Valley about the model of human occupation and then recruited Janice to um, be a member of our faculty. Uh, really at the very, very, well, quite early on in the program, Janice can speak for herself about exactly when she joined us. Um, and then of course, to watch the growth of the program, the growth of its research initiatives, the um, incredible changes in the curriculum were both as an insider for the 10 years that I was at Jefferson and as an outsider uh, for the years afterwards where I, um, gleefully observed uh, the growth and watched the careers of so many of you, of so many of our alumni flourish. In 97, I went to Philadelphia University, which was called Philadelphia College of Textiles and Science when I first got there and um, had the privilege of recruiting Kathy to be the founding fieldwork coordinator, um, a role I was pretty familiar with. Um, and together, of course, we uh, envisioned a pretty exciting, innovative program um, that not only was innovative in its vision as an occupational therapy program, but in its vision to and be engaged in an interprofessional manner with so many programs at, within the university that were design related. Um, and then, of course, eventually, um, I moved over to continuing studies and um, had the opportunity to oversee the founding of the OTA program at Philadelphia University at the time. Of course, now it's part of Jefferson, as well as uh, support quite a number of students who were completing their bachelor's degree in a non-traditional manner and then chose to come on, go into the master's in OT program. So that's enough about me. Let's move on. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. That's good. You bring it all together and lead us right into Janice Burke. Thrilled you are here. Thank you so much. Um, Janice, as Ellen kind of introduced, has an amazing perspective, uh, not only as chair for many years, uh, leading us uh, in an up direction in all areas, but then as dean, and it was always wonderful to have a dean who's an occupational therapist. And uh, I'm so thrilled that you are here to share your insights and uh, anything you'd like to share, Janice. The floor is yours. Thank you, Kathy. I don't see myself, but I trust you do maybe. We see you, yeah. Oh, great. Okay, <laughs> so um, thank you very much for asking me to, um, uh, for inviting me tonight. Um, I was very excited to be able to be part of this. Um, when I came to Jefferson in 1988, I, had, I was just leaving the University of Southern California and leaving Southern California. And um, many people said to me, don't go, including the realtor <laughs> who said, <laughs> you'll never be able to buy your house again. But anyway, um, uh, they said, don't go. You know, you'll never find um, any place like this. Uh, another job like this at the University of Southern California. And um, lo and behold, they were wrong. Uh, <laughs> Jefferson has been um, an absolutely wonderful experience for me. The Department of Occupational Therapy uh, is dear, near and dear to my heart after all these years. It's just been a complete and total pleasure to work in that department and to grow it. Um, I, I, found out, I found out when I got there that one of the things that I was um, able to do and interested in doing was growing a department and growing faculty and growing students. So um, in a way, the job was very, very easy. It was um, working with a smart, 
active, dynamic, thoughtful faculty who just couldn't wait for the next challenge and often brought those challenges to me. Uh, an energetic student body, many of you here tonight as alums, an engaged community of um, OT practitioners who were interested in hosting our students, but also listening, as you're suggesting, Kathy, to what our, their concerns were when we sent students to them for field work and um, helping uh, inform us of the kinds of demands that were needed um, for field work. Um, we had a enthusiastic administration. You know, um, I served under some great deans myself and they opened the doors for me and opened the doors for OT. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had great, we started to really reap the benefits of it. We've had, we had national recognition in AOTA as well as US News and World Report. We got ranked, we were excited and we just went through the roof with that ranking with Jefferson Elder Care, which Kathy um, so ably has led um, in simulation, in evidence-based treatment, in um, federal and state uh, funding sources. So it was um, really uh, and easy to work with such a wonderful engaged group. And I think, I know you will have great success, Kathy, as you start to bring together the alumni network and grow it. Yes, yes. Thank you. I'm, I'm looking forward to that because we can't go forward without that support. Thank you so much, Janice. Now, Ellen and Janice have moved away from Jefferson, but I wanted to um, invite Roseanne and Wendy. Wendy Krubnick could not make it tonight. So I'm thrilled that Roseanne is here. Um, Roseanne, I know you have an amazing perspective as well, because I think you started out as an adjunct, but you'll tell us that, um, here, and have been here for many, many years, uh, and moved through to being department chair, and now doing such exciting work um, in your center and in your research. So thank you so much for being here, and I'm going to pass it on to you. Thank you for that kind introduction, Kathy. It's so great to see you, Ellen and Janice. Hello, I know. <laughs> bringing back some great memories of um, the times we had together and the great visions that you had that, you know, I was able to be a part of. Uh, it was just such a dynamic and exciting time. So it's really good to see you. We should not make it so far and few and far in between, right? Um, yeah, Kathy, you're right. I am. Um, I started in 1982, but not as an adjunct, more oh. as a consultant to write the curriculum. And I have very fond memories of Ruth, uh, Shem, and I working together very hard on the uh, pediatric and neuroscience oh. curriculum. Okay. Um, sometimes in my kitchen, she would come to me because I was pregnant with my first child, who's now 38. <laughs> oh my gosh. And um, yeah, and just really, you know, so fortunate to be a part of the incredible vision that Ruth and Ellen created, and then later to be part of the growth of the department, as Jan Janice spoke about so eloquently um, with Janice, you know, really um, opportunities and experiences that I'll hold near and dear in my heart. And also having being the most long-standing member yes. on the call tonight, I, I would like to just have a shout out to all of the alumni. I know so many of you and I, it's funny now because I still live in the area and just, just during COVID, I was walking in the park and one, an alumni stopped me and said, where's Anne? And then we had a nice little chat. She ends up, she lives in this area. She has two kids. She's still working in OT. So I love when those experiences happen and they, they happen more and more as the alumni um, group from Jefferson gets larger and larger. Um, as Kathy said, I've been, uh, you know, had a lot of different roles in the department from, uh, you know, instructor all the way up through professor and then chair and 
Now I am the founding director of the Jefferson Autism Center of Excellence, which is a real joy and, and really a dream come true for me in terms of my career, where we were able to create a, a Jefferson Center of Excellence for Autism, at where we conduct research, education and training, uh, do community outreach and service uh, around persons with autism and other neurodiversity. And um, it's just been, you know, really, um, really nice to see the work around autism and occupation and for occupational therapy to take such a center stage in uh, autism, which as I'm sure you all know, is such a growing and very, um, you know, highly publicized field uh, for occupational therapy. And I'll just do one little side note, which is that uh, there was a, a survey done that asked parents of children with autism what the number one, what service helped their child the most. And number one was occupational therapy. So we have an awful lot to contribute and we're trying to do that in uh, the, the Autism Center. Um, Ellen talked a lot about the curriculum and Janice about the growth. I just wanted to focus a little bit on research because I, I feel like that's one of the main contributions that I made as chair, that we were really able to, um, to solidify our contributions to research mm -hmm. and now be uh, among the leaders in generating new knowledge for the profession, of course, building on that that came before us but now um, providing evidence uh, to support the value and effectiveness of what we do in occupational therapy. And we've become a well-respected um, department for that, both internally in Jefferson itself, as well as externally within the profession. And we now have centers, uh, other centers of excellence as well. I encourage you to go to the website and just take a look at all the different centers that we have and the, um, knowledge we're generating, the research that we're doing, as well as the trainings that we're able to um, provide as well. And then just one other um, uh, topic, if you will, is um, about diversity, equity, and inclusion. I mean, we must talk about that in, in this year that just passed 2020. And I'm really proud of Jefferson for addressing diversity, equity, and inclusion straight up by having the needed conversations and challenging Jefferson and occupational therapy in general to create pathways for diverse individuals from underserved populations. And so I really do see this as one of the uh, challenges, our challenges, and by this I mean OT and Jefferson for the future. Uh, to bring diversity, equity, and inclusion to the profession. And I think you'll be pleased to see that Jefferson is emerging as a leader <clears throat> in this as well for occupational therapy. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Roseanne. So 38 years you've been here. Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> Actually, 39, if you count the year I was pregnant. Okay, 39. <laughs> You win the prize. And go figure, I'm only, I'm not even 50 yet. I know. How does that happen? <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, um, Janice, Ellen, and Roseanne. I really appreciate you guys being here and you can chime in as I continue. So um, it has been mentioned already, uh, my journey. I just, for me, um, if anyone had told me uh, way back in, you know, 1997 or 98, that at some point I'd have the honor and pleasure of uh, working between Philadelphia and University and Jefferson, and it would become one. I would not have believed it no matter what. I would have bet money on that for sure. But full circle here, uh, working with, as Janice mentioned, amazing faculty and students and alum. Uh, it's just, you know, not that I don't have, as we all do, our stressful days, but the bottom line is every every morning and every day I enjoy what I'm doing and I do and feel very proud to be here. So uh, as Roseanne mentioned, I, I really felt like I couldn't go forward with <clears throat> talking about the department and what we're doing without really acknowledging uh, what is going on in the world, as Roseanne, Roseanne said, and um, really the awakening across the country 
that occurred here uh, to systemic racism and social injustice. The impact has been great on our department, college and university. Uh, personally, um, I am really continue since, since the summer uh, to be on a very re reflective action-oriented journey myself, uh, striving to really listen and learn um, and connect what's going on to what's going on in our department. Uh, I do feel as though our department and the people in our department and connected with us, as well as the college and university uh, are committed to this. Um, I wanted to just list, as I have here on the slide, a couple, uh, a few things that are a result of this summer. And before I do that, I need to acknowledge uh, Lydia Navarro Walker, who's on our faculty. Lydia has been amazing and commit, committed uh, to make these links for us to be a leader uh, in this effort. So as, as have many, but uh, Lydia has just really come forward and um, I depend on her oftentimes to keep me thinking, right? Um, so as you can see here, we have started a new chapter of COTAD, the Co Coalition for Oc of Occupational Therapy Advocates for Diversity, which is a chapter out of the American Occupational Therapy Association. One of our newer faculty members, Jenny Martinez, is the advisor, so I'm real excited. This is our first academic year starting with COTAD, so I'm looking forward to the activities and the work that they will be doing. Uh, Lydia uh, started in the summer um, uh, Conversations That Matter with students and uh, continues on since that time. I think the other departments in the college have moved on or not doing it anymore, but Lydia, because the feedback as she has shared with me has been so positive with students. So opportunities to talk and share uh, continue. And then Susan Toth Cohen, I think along with Lydia's support and other uh, faculty as well, who have been very supported and engaged, um, continue with a book club where books and articles are discussed uh, around racism and bias and uh, social injustice. So those are just a few things that uh, are ongoing and that um, I feel great about that is occurring within our department. And lastly, I needed to highlight, uh, I wanted to highlight a group of alumni that again, after George, the death of George Floyd and all in the summer came together and have been advocating and uh, working and connecting with students. They've been meeting um, regularly and uh, really have a commitment to work with us. And I think this will continue now that we are establishing a formal uh, alumni network, uh, but they will continue with their initiatives. And I hope we can weave those into uh, activities that are gonna be happening uh, this year with SODA and COTAT and move forward. So I so appreciate uh, this group of alumni and uh, their activism and commitment. So moving to uh, two campuses and where we stand now, I, I, I wanted to just highlight some of the uh, changes from some of you who are here who were coming to Jefferson Center City and entering uh, Edison, which you can see the building there, or those that are here from uh, early times at Philadelphia University and entering Hayward Hall. Uh, we now are referring to our campus as East Falls and Center City, uh, although I oftentimes divert to Philly U without just automatically. And you can see, I just wanted to share some pictures here on the left-hand side where you see uh, Philadelphia University and Hayward Hall, um, there is well, some of you, if not all of you on this uh, on the, uh, tonight together might know the Canbar Campus Center because I cannot recall when that was built. Uh, I think I was still there when that was built. Uh, but we have a new, exciting, wonderful uh, building where now the MSOT program, along with the other programs that are under the College of Rehabilitation Science sits, and that's the K and, Her and Harold Ronson Health and Applied Science Center, or for short, the Ronson Center. Uh, 
and it's right on uh, Henry Avenue. So that's very exciting. New building. Um, we're still we've moved in, but uh, still learning our way around that. And then on Center City campus, we've been in the 901 building uh, for quite some time. And then uh, the uh, Hamilton building where we have a lot of our classes. I wasn't sure who was going to be joining us from way back early on. So some of you might know those buildings already as well. So our challenge and my day-to-day uh, -day world as chair is really looking at bridging these campuses, these programs, looking at the synergies, um, uh, bringing folks together and uh, establishing equity and establishing ways in which things can be done the same across two campuses. It has been a challenge, but yet in some ways it's been um, uh, easy because there's support from so many people to do that. We owe, the occupational therapy department, I would say, leads the effort in terms of um, bridging the two campuses just because of the nature of our department and the fact that we have programs on both campuses. Moving on, I, I wanted to just uh, share, and based on what we heard from Ellen and uh, Janice, uh, in terms of the growth of the department, I wanted to just give you an overview. I know you might not be able to see this in detail, it's people's names, <laughs> but just to highlight some more of the connections that we have here. So our, our Dean is uh, Steve Williams, and he's the Dean of the College of Rehabilitation Sciences. And we, across the, uh, under my name, we have four, five, excuse me, uh, program directors and uh, with faculty, that teach across programs on the Center City campus in the OTB program and the master's program, uh, as well as our program on East Falls campus, the MSOT program that uh, Audrey Zapatel directs. Also, you can see here on the right-hand side where Roseanne is, is the centers uh, that uh, do interact the folks there, Roseanne, uh, and Jay Mulcahy directs the Center of Outcomes and Measurement, and Jane Fedorsik uh, directs the Center and an Advanced Practice Certificate in Hand and Upper Limb Rehab. We have the pleasure of interacting with them, although Roseanne is doing so much research now, as is MJ in her center. Uh, they, we still have the um, opportunity to engage them in faculty activities and engaging with our students. So that's a very fortunate uh, situation. I wanted to add over in the left corner, you see there um, continuing professional studies, which Ellen was referring to earlier, and the occupational therapy assistant program. Uh, Shelly Osaji is the dean, and LaRonda Lockhart Keen is the program director. Uh, and I have them there because although they're not under our um, officially in within our college, we do connect with them, interact with them, certainly in uh, field work, there's a strong connection. And uh, they join our monthly multi-campus meeting. So uh, we want to stay um, in connection with the OTA program. So I see them as part of us in a certain way. And then uh, we have our assistant, uh, administrative assistants that of course we could not do without. So that's how our department is looking right now. Moving on to programs. So I wanted to uh, just give a broad brush overview of uh, where we stand right now and with programs and that where we're kind of transitioning to. So currently for our entry level programs, we do have three accredited programs within our department. We have the MSOT program on East Falls campus, which is a weekend format and blended learning both on uh, Fridays and Saturdays and uh, online. Uh, it is about a 2.5 year program and it does include uh, three plus two students, which are track up students that enter as freshmen and then move into that program in their senior year. Uh, that is a robust, uh, very active, engaged uh, program, which enters about 30, 32 students. 
in between those two cohorts every year. The MSOT program in Center City uh, it enters about uh, 40 to 45 students. Uh, it is an MSOT program day program. It does include a three plus two cohort that comes from the University of Delaware. Same structure as on East Falls entering as in their senior year. And then also it includes a BS to MSOT cohort that enters as, enter as junior transfers. And then lastly, we have our OTD uh, program that's a day program on uh, Center City campus, which is a three year program. We're in a bit of a transition currently that I would say started about a year or so ago. Um, I get sometimes confused with time because of COVID and I, my, <laughs> my time orientation is not exactly right. Uh, so I say maybe two years. So we're, we're, phasing we're phasing programs out or cohorts out. And then we've modified uh, a partnership that we have with the University of Delaware. So I'll just ex um, go through this. Uh, we're, we're in the midst of phasing out the BSMS cohort uh, currently. We just entered our last uh, cohort last fall, and they will graduate in 2023. And in addition, phasing out the MSOT Center City Cohort Day Program and building up our uh, OTD program. So the numbers for the MSOT program are going down and the numbers for uh, the OTD entry level program are going up on Center City. Uh, we'll graduate our last MSOT cohort in August of 2023. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the three plus two MSOT uh, program in East Falls, we're um, phasing that out and I'll move to the next modification of University of Delaware contract, which is a partner school for us because it's kind of merging into that. So we, our contract or partnership with the University of Delaware, which is very lucrative, that we now started this fall, uh, excuse, yes, fall of 2020 to enter three plus three uh, students. So we have begun um, the tra and transitioned and started the three plus three, which is an accelerated um, BS to OTD program. And that is going to be uh, maintained on the East Falls campus. Uh, we'll enter the first uh, students as seniors in the professional phase in fall of 2023. So what are we gonna be looking like in fall of 2023? Uh, we will have essentially two accredited programs at that time. However, the BS, OTD East Falls program, the program uh, that we will enter at, you know, as freshmen and they'll get their bachelor's degree along the way. That actually has to, that does have to go through accreditation. Although the OTD curriculum uh, that will be delivering on East Falls will be the curriculum that has been accredited uh, by ACOAT that is delivered on Center City. Uh, but because they're starting as freshmen and it is an accelerated program, we have to go through accreditation for that. Uh, but we feel very confident that that will not be um, a problem. So at the uh, start of the fall 2023, we will be entering um, students into the MSOT East Falls program, uh, a smaller cohort and only uh, post back student students that have a bachelor's degree that are entering that weekend format, targeting uh, the population of folks that need to be working or have family responsibilities or other responsibilities where that weekend format uh, works well. So we'll, I, we, we feel strongly that that's important and important option to um, for the community. Uh, we have uh, a very uh, robust uh, enrollment um, experience right now in that program. And then for the OTD program split between the East Falls and Center City, 
uh, and we have great ideas. Tina DeAngelis um, is the director and will be overseeing both program, which is, is a requirement from ACOAT, but uh, Adel Harvey will be the coordinator on East Falls. Uh, for the BS to OTD program, who has much experience as the program director for, for, for the BS to um, MS program and loves working with undergrads. So that'll be a win-win. So this is what we'll be looking like uh, in fall of 2023. And then uh, as mentioned uh, before, we have a very, very, very robust post-professional OTD program which is 100% online. And of course, that is for occupational therapists. I think maybe some of the alumni here tonight uh, may have graduated uh, from that program and uh, both here and Legacy Philadelphia University. Uh, we, when this merger occurred, those two programs merged. So we did uh, have pro, uh, students merge with us from Philadelphia University who are finishing the program uh, within the uh, Center City curriculum. And we're fortunate that Marie Christine Podfin, who is uh, on the faculty primarily at East Falls, uh, is uh, actively engaged now in mentoring students in our PPOTD. And so that's been a nice transition. And then uh, Roseanne mentioned, of course, that we, <clears throat> uh, in within her um, center and within the other centers, we are offering advanced practice certificates, which I believe Roseanne and maybe with Janice's support developed this way, way back when. And uh, we have, as you can see here, five uh, certificates, which are completed 100% online uh, and are for occupational therapists. Although I will say the new design in healthcare delivery uh, APC is open to, um, uh, non uh, nursing and other health professions as well. And I just realized I forgot to put MJ's on here. We have a coaching in health care that I, sh I neglected to add to here, uh, that it comes out of MJ Center, MJ Mulcahy Center. So that's an active, uh, engaged community in the post-professional world in the uh, advanced practice certificates. So lastly, I wanted to uh, just end with um, sharing that we are really launching this uh, <clears throat> now, as we speak, um, a process of uh, strategic planning because we, we're really, our next strategic plan, it starts in 2021. So COVID kind of held us up a little bit in this, uh, in these activities, but we are um, moving forward and plan a, uh, strategic planning process for this summer. And I, of course, would uh, will be reaching out and would like to include alumni and students in that. This is our uh, current department mission statement uh, that I thought I should share, uh, which may evolve. We are in this process uh, in the college too. As a new college, we've been undergoing strategic planning uh, as well, which I think will guide as well uh, the planning that we do in our department to align with the a strategic plan that the college is designing. <clears throat> and we're in the final stages of the college plan. So I thought I would just share with you, we did, a year ago, we had during our uh, summer retreat, we did some branding exercises and we just brainstormed as a department, the words that describe Jefferson Occupational Therapy. And uh, I uh, came across this uh, when I was thinking about, you know, what to share about strategic planning. And really, we want to first start with who are we and how are we represented? And these words, uh, again, a year later, I think it has been, uh, that reflect, I think, the type of innovation, the type of faculty, and uh, where we think we're going. Uh, although we're, at, you know, things have changed and um, progressed since the time these words were spoken in a summer retreat, but I think they hold up and uh, reflects much of who we are. And then uh, finally to share some phrases that came out of that process 
uh, that describe Jefferson Occupational Therapy. Some of you might have some things to add or comments. Um, advocates and capable protectors. I love we are stars creating star makers. We can lead because we have led and uh, deep roots and high reach describes uh, Jefferson Occupational Therapy. So uh, to end with where are we right now and where are we headed? We want to establish, and this is a start, a very formal OT alumni network. Uh, Stephen Kern, who I'm sure most of you know, who's been teaching here quite some time and uh, practiced across the street at the hospital for years before he came here. Um, and Marie Christine Poppin, who I mentioned earlier, primarily from East Falls, they are the co um, alumni liaison. And they've had, uh, they've started meeting. And I think Jeff Spence, who you met earlier, will be scheduling a planning meeting in February to establish the network, its activities and mission. And I'm so looking forward to working with that group and thankful for Stephen and Marie Christine for assuming that role. And I wanted to also mention, which is really reflected in Janice and Ellen B, well, Roseanne too, who's been here the longest actually, to mention that in the fall of 21, so fingers crossed, we would like to celebrate um, 35 years and 20 years. And it's 35 years since the first group of students graduated from uh, Jefferson Center City and it's, it was 20 years, uh, or 20 years now. Uh, I think it was 35 years in 2020, and it's 20 years now in 2021 that, Alan, believe it or not, that we graduated our first class in 2001. So they, these are milestones that we want to absolutely acknowledge and celebrate. So more to come on that, but I just wanted to give a heads up that that's being planned for the fall because we really want to do something where we can maybe be together and not do a Zoom meeting. And with that, I will uh, say thank you all for joining us and open it up for questions or comments. And I think Jeff, I'll just stop sharing. That'd be perfect. And for all of you who are attending, you can use the Q&A button located at the bottom of your screen to share any questions for Dr. Pearsall. Uh, you, if you don't see the button, try moving your mouse and it should appear for you. Uh, we do have some questions that we didn't receive in advance as well. Um, one of which, uh, Kathy, is it, within the Jefferson program, uh, what, what is considered now to be a capstone project for the program for the students? The capstone projects are um, part of the occupational therapy doctoral curriculum, and those are um, done in the third year of the program and students are placed with faculty, uh, full-time faculty as a faculty mentor and faculty are connected with many community organizations or with their scholarship. Uh, for example, Roseanne is taking uh, in her center, a couple of uh, doctoral students for their capstone. So the students, um, have the experience over two semesters to um, do program developing, data collection, uh, advocacy. You, students choose um, at least one area that they will be um, uh, advancing, uh, if you will, as part of this year experience, the fall and spring semester. And then they also do a um, project where they present that and are mentored by their faculty member, which is presented at the end of the uh, year. Uh, as I already mentioned, um, Tina DeAngelis is the director and uh, Lydia Navarro Walker is the doctoral capstone coordinator who could really provide more details. But we have amazing students who are publishing and presenting and uh, doing really exciting things. We, we Again, COVID hit us we're, we're combining two semesters into one semester right now in the spring, uh, which meets standards, but has been challenging. So those are the types of uh, work that the students are doing. It's advancing and giving them more in-depth experience as a practitioner. 
Thank you. We have a, a shout out from uh, Marge Walsh. She wants to recognize she's of the first TJU class of 85 and wants us to know that she's on today. Oh, that's fantastic. Hi to her. I remember her. Oh, that's, and I, they can't, we can't share, we can't share faces. Thank, well, welcome. Thank you for coming. That's fantastic. I love that. Roseanne remembers. <laughs> I, do, I just want to say that I just want to say that Marge was my um, office mate when I came to Jefferson. She was a graduate assistant, and when I moved to North Carolina, one of the first OTs I met, um, uh, we connected and found out that our mutual connection was Marge Walsh. So. Oh my gosh! And here's Marge right here. That's amazing. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Marge, for coming. <laughs> um, another question that we have, Kathy, relates to, to OT as a profession. Um, do you see the profession moving toward direct access? Oh, interesting. Um, others can chime in, too, uh, on the panel. Direct access has been given to physical therapy, I know, and it's probably been quite some time. I honestly... I don't know if I can comment specifically on that, to be honest with you. I don't have enough knowledge to, to comment. I don't know if Ellen or Janice or Roseanne could um, add any information about direct access. I mean, based on um, state licensure, and I noticed it's this way in Pennsylvania, occupational therapists can do an evaluation without a prescription from a physician, but then cannot move forward. And I'm sure the person who asked this question knows that already. Uh, cannot move forward with treatment without getting assigned um, uh, prescription and or, or prescription and treatment uh, order from the physician. But in a way, we have some kind of direct access in that we can go out and evaluate someone and say they would benefit from occupational therapy. But I'm Kathy, so very Kathy, yeah. Yes, my understanding is that this is Ellen. Yeah, um, my understanding is that. While, the, while what you stated is absolutely accurate, if it's a wellness program, if it's, if it's not a program that is directly related to a medical a disability or disorder that requires a prescription, or as particularly in terms of reimbursement often is yes. where the um, stricture, stricture yes. comes. But if it's a wellness program, uh, for example, there is no uh there are no constraints of course yeah community program yeah community or consultation yes 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 yeah. yes i was in my head when i hear direct access i think medical model and that's for, yeah but you're right, right. but i think that well. you know unless there has been a change that yeah. i've missed on the licensure yeah. board um for those who don't know i served as chair of licensure board for eight years so unless there's yeah, been a change, yeah. I think you know, we would, we tried really hard to keep that mm -hmm. um, opportunity available for OTs, yes. but it, it's um, not always well utilized. Thank you, Ellen. Sure. Wonderful. Yes, thank you both. Um, our last question um, is something that I can probably help with as well. Um, we have a question asking how um, alumni can be specifically get involved. Yes. Yes. I'm glad there's that question. That's good. <laughs> exactly. And we've been working as as Kathy mentioned to to work to put put the groundwork in to establish our OT alumni network. If you're interested in being part of the planning process and, and coming to sort of a brainstorming meeting, which we'll have in February, you can email the alumni office at alumni at jefferson.edu. We'll have that again on our closing slide. But if you email us and that you're interested in getting involved, I'll be sure to make sure that you receive information about our brainstorming and planning meeting where we'll talk about what this group wants to do, what type of programming that they want to do to connect alumni to alumni, alumni to students, alumni to the university. And so we're really looking forward to getting started um, in the coming month. And Jeff, do they do the same thing to update? It's always, you know, the struggle is always loose lose connection because wrong email address, et cetera. So that's another, they can email that or how do they make sure that it's accurate? They can certainly email that, but I'll actually put up our, our <laughs> slide, which I will share more information with everybody. And, and thank you, Kathy, and to our special guests this evening. 
for, for joining us and for sharing uh, your history and your experiences and, and helping to really jumpstart this alumni engagement initiative. Um, as Kathy mentioned, many of you may want to update your information, whether it be your employment, um, your, your social media accounts, your, your email. We've just launched a brand new Jefferson Alumni Network, which is available at alumninetwork.jefferson.edu. If you sign up and update your profile before Valentine's Day, you'll be entered in our drawings for weekly prizes and our, a, a larger grand prize um, at the end of the month. So sign up there. You'll have the ability there to search for classmates, to search for alumni based on class year, major, medical specialty, region, um, and more. So, so get started there and start connecting and updating your profile. Again, if you're interested in getting involved in the OT Alumni Network, email us at alumni at jefferson.edu. And we also have a number of upcoming virtual programs coming up in, in the months to come that you can find at jefferson.edu slash alumni events. Uh, next week, we have a talk on the secrets to stress-free sleep. Uh, we also have a fun wine and design night in the beginning of February, where we will send you all the materials you need to paint along with an artist, and you just bring the wine. Uh, we have a, a talk on understanding disparities in healthcare, and I know that uh, diversity and inclusion initiatives are very important to, to many of you. Um, and then uh, another event at the end of February with um, our provost, Mark Tikachinski, uh, will be providing a university update for all alumni um, to update you on the university, its students, and the latest uh, news from campus. So thank you all once again for joining us. We really look Thank you so much. Yes, we really look forward to continuing these connections. So we hope that you'll stay safe and be well.